Welcome to the Second Drafts Podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. I'm EJ. And today on Second Drafts, uh, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, why making things easier to create breeds creativity. Uh, but first, uh, EJ there, you had something, uh, the news there that you want to talk about, right? Yeah, first we've got a little bit of a news item. It's not brand new, but it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard, we've got this uh, Author Solutions class action lawsuit recently that mm-hmm. people have been gearing up for. And it turns out it's been dismissed by the court <laughs> in New York. Really? So, go figure. Uh, but, you know, I think we've heard a lot about people complaining about this. Um, you know, I'm not about to tell the court how to do their jobs or anything. <laughs> but um, I think there might actually be something there to have, you know, to have looked at. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Mm-hmm. Well, as I understand yeah, it, there, like, uh, it was about deceptive practices, that sort of thing. Is that mm, correct? Yeah, that is. I think a lot of authors have complained uh, about it, and I've followed this for a little while on uh, the blog of that one writer. I don't know whether you know him, David, of the you know he wrote Let's Get Digital. I'm and not familiar with that now. Yeah, he's actually uh, written about it quite often. Just can't find the link right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's been deceptive practices apparently from Author Solutions. People have been promised. Uh, marketing services, review services, and they've not always been getting what's been promised. And, of course, they only find this out after they've paid. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, of course. Because <laughs> according, yeah. according to the courts, it's not a case. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's not a case, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose it uh, depends on the, the, the perspective. Um, I'm sure for the, the authors that have suffered with us it's it's plenty of a case but you know what are you gonna do so like what uh what kind of specifics were Um, part of it there let's just double check this um look from this other guy's blog you can see there's been some changes in prices after people have already signed uh there's one woman who actually contracted with them for uh, copy editing charges for her manuscript and it was she was told it would be around four hundred dollars and when she received mm-hmm. her credit card bill it was something like ten times as much <laughs> Jeez. Uh, which is you know there's there's a place for going over the limit a little bit and then telling people look I'm sorry it's a bit more expensive but ten times <laughs> yeah I think there there are limits and I suppose there's other things as well, like uh, overbearing sales reps. They mentioned, which mm-hmm. is, which is something I suspect you've got some uh, experience with. Well, yeah, I think we both had a, a little bit of experience with that. Uh, I think you mentioned there before to me. Um, on my end of things, um, I called them up, spoke with somebody, and uh, they like sent me an email and. Before I went through with anything, like I was just kind of investigating on it and everything, and uh, just looking it up on my own, like I found that some of the things just didn't really match up, and the um, the amount of sales that you would have to have to even just break even on the cost of it just really did not add up. Um, like you would have to sell, I think, on their lowest one. Even with a discount, uh, 300 copies you'd have to sell just to break even. And like that's not even uh, factoring in some of their higher ones, which really the, the only benefit that you would get from doing it, I feel, is from those higher ones. So you'd have to sell thousands of copies before you would even break even. And So for what kinds of services are we talking about here? Uh, so for instance, um, like their lowest one, is regular nine ninety nine, uh, and I think this is in Canadian dollars, but a thousand dollars for their lowest one, and that doesn't even get you in bookstores, and it's really just. So this is the marketing package we're uh, talking about, or was it? 
Was it reviews or? Uh, this one's just like the regular, like getting uh, getting the book kind of on their digital store for print oh. copies. So you mean the the very thing that Amazon does for you for free? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like this is more like a print on demand side of things, though. Ah, so like create space. Yeah. Thing. So they put it on their store, and the basic one, that's literally all it does. They do <laughs> like cover design and stuff like that, but uh, for a thousand dollars, just to get on their digital store and not have really much in there, the the value of it was not really there. Yeah, and because on CreateSpace, for instance, it's 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 comparable, but to get onto the store with CreateSpace, you don't pay anything up front. You it's yeah. just like a profit share arrangement. Yeah, it's free, so. and like you <sighs> don't have to do the cover. So if you have a cover already done, then all the better. They do offer those services, but it's separate, so you don't have to take it. Whereas with the iUniverse, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned there but i universe was the imprint uh, oh, yeah. which is in canada there uh if you go with them you have to get the cover done by them otherwise like that's more value that's kind of just lost and then again with those just the basic ones just getting it on their their digital store um it's almost like there's a couple pay to win <laughs> uh, <laughs> promotion course. side of things so if you go with a higher package, there's these um, ones that are like $2,000. And then you have uh, eligibility for an ed- editorial evaluation and then editor's choice eligibility. There's this star program eligibility and rising star thing. So essentially, if you get chosen for these things, you get a little uh, like a award on your listing. <laughs> It does sound exactly like pay to win. Yeah. Because I can't imagine many people are going to be paying for those. And, you know, it's it's like, I don't think it's going to be honest almost. It seems a bit strange. Yeah. And it's like, if if your book is good enough, why would it not be on every package, this option, right? Like, it <laughs> it really it feel it felt like a pay to win type situation. Yeah. And bane of gaming. (laughs) And then uh, even on that and the things there, you're not getting in a bookstore. So uh, like the bookstores that are in Canada is like Chapters and Indigo. Mm -hmm. And there are packages that are $3,000 and $4,000. Those would be the ones that would actually get you in bookstores. So like it just the cost benefit was not there. And so I decided not to go with it. And so I wanted to share this with you because it was, I found it quite hilarious when I got it. But just, you dodged a bullet there. <laughs> but it's just like uh, on the side of the aggressive uh, salespeople. So this is the email that I got back after I said that I didn't want to go through with it. Uh, so it says, Jeremy. I'm surprised to hear that. Have you decided just to leave it as a do-it-yourself project for now and focus on sales at a later time? (laughs) So it's like basically saying, oh, you're not going to get any sales unless you go with us. I'm not going to get a single sale. It's (laughs) just going to be DIY and how dare you. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, this dinky little book that you're going to come out with unless you come with us type thing. So I, I found that quite funny. Yeah, I've I've had similar with the the salespeople. Um, also, just sent a couple of emails right in the beginning when I was starting to look at you know what can I do with this manuscript that I've written, mm-hmm. I've spent so many years on, and I did. I my experience is with Trafford. The this is another imprint, but it's still the same company, Author Solutions. Mm-hmm. And look what happened. They started emailing me and trying to urge me to take the different packages. They even sent me through a contract to say, oh, this is how it's going to work. And they made it sound like this is a publishing contract. (laughs) And I took the time to go online and, you know, take a look around and ask, you know, just look at what people are saying. And it turns out uh, these are, they're not quite publishing contracts, you know, in the way that you think of those. They're, They're really just these 
self-publishing, self-help contracts where they just offer you kinds of services. And, yeah, as far as I could see, people don't tend to get uh, value for their money. Look, I wouldn't call this out-and-out out a scam, like you're never going to hear from them ever again. And But people <laughs> tend to be underwhelmed, I think. Yeah, like and then it, it feels like they, they will do what they say they will do, but they're not going to market your book. They're not going to really do anything above and beyond unless you put down the money. That's really how I felt. And uh, even just like there was uh, this review package when I was looking it up there just to kind of look into it. So there's a review package where they offer three reviews, uh, like editorial reviews for these different sites. Uh, So the sites are Kirkus Indie, uh, Clarion Review for Fee, it might just be called Clarion, but this is coming from the site there, and uh, Blue Ink. So their cost, uh, again, I think this is Canadian dollars there, is uh, $3,499 plus tax. Now, for an editorial review, you know, maybe it might be okay, but... Then I went and checked on the actual sites themselves. So I checked on Kirkus and Clarion and Blue Ink. And altogether, their price individually, if you did it yourself, uh, this might be in American dollars, but it's $1,319. That's a big difference. So factoring in uh, potential um, uh, currency exchange there, that's about like a $1,700 difference. Yeah, that they're getting for just being a middleman, really. Yeah, it, it, it's silly, really. Like, <laughs> it's, it's quite an expensive middleman. Yeah. It's because how that's supposed to work, how I understand it, when, when you're kind of an aggregate service like that, when you're a middleman like that, you, both parties are supposed to be gaining from this. So you know, for you as the author, it should be cheaper to do it through um, this iUniverse place than it is to do it individually. So that's what you're supposed to be scoring out of this. And if you're wondering, you know, how are they supposed to do it for cheaper, that's the whole point of it. They're supposed to be getting bulk discounts. You know, if they send uh, you know, 10 authors along to Kirkus and Clarion and Blue Ink per month, they should be negotiating bulk discounts, and that should be their margin. They can't load a you know, 100% margin on top of <laughs> what the other guys are charging. Otherwise, why on earth wouldn't you just go directly to the other guys? Yeah, and I don't think there would be really anything stopping you either, uh, even if you went with one of their standard packages without the reviews, say. There would be really nothing stopping you from uh, approaching Kirkus or Clarion or Blue Ink afterwards and just doing it yourself like it it it, it I, th- I feel that it really is deceptive because mm. of that fact like they put the package on there making it seem like this is uh the only way to get it sort of thing whereas it's really not so like there is definitely a side of the consumer like you know buyer beware type thing you have to do your research but it's still like it. It's it. It feels not right. Like <laughs> I, I can definitely see why people uh, went for a lawsuit there. But I, I don't see why nothing came of it. That that seems really silly of me. Uh, to me, sorry. Yeah. So, the final piece of takeaway advice I think that we can uh, actually give to people. I would think I'm quite confident in saying this. People. Just, you know, never pay for publishing services uh, thinking that it's it's going to be a, a publishing contract. How does the... Some of the people always say it this way, you know, in publishing, in real publishing, the money always flows from the publisher to the author. It never flows the other way. And many of these places, you'll see, they ask, oh, you have to buy... That's what my contract said uh, from these people. Oh, you have a contract, we're going to publish you, but you need to buy or sell personally a thousand of your books before we'll even get started on this. <laughs> they, I had to hand sell, I suppose, 
a thousand of my books before they would even start the process of the publishing. And that's you know that's tantamount to telling me, well, I need to pay for buying a thousand of my own books before any marketing has been done. Because who's going to make sales without any marketing? Um, well, so I think that's the important thing to get here is the way money flows and you have to be aware of this because there are many people taking advantage yeah and it just really feels like uh, this kind of i guess will lead a little bit into our uh, second topic there but it really feels like the old way of self-publishing like you had to buy so many books of your own there like get them printed off and then basically it's up to you to uh, market and sell those books like definitely there might be a little bit of a service provided by the author solutions imprints but it really feels like that old way of doing things and the cost benefit is really not going to be there and nowadays uh, with ebooks and uh, print on demand like the create space things have just become so easy to self-publish and kind of get your name out there. Um, like doing it that old way just feels almost silly. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people with vested interests in getting us back to doing things the old way. <laughs> but, um, it's not a surprise to see you know, which parent company is <laughs> at the helm of companies like Author Solutions. Mm. But, you know. Penguin, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's Penguin Random House. Huh. So they definitely want to try and keep the publishing end on there and the things, I imagine. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think the worse of a name, you know, the worse of a reputation, these uh, <laughs> publishing. Look, we can be charitable and say maybe they just want in on the self publishing action. And fine, maybe it's that. But there's a kind of a little paranoid part of my mind that goes, you know, the worse the uh, reputation becomes for these self-publishing things, the more I think people are going to be maybe tempted to avoid self-publishing and maybe become convinced, oh, maybe it's better to go through the, the old way, the agenting and the yeah. querying and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's a long-term strategy. Yeah. And well, yeah, that, that does lead kind of directly into our our main topic there just about uh, making creativity easier uh, creates uh, or <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really say that well sorry uh, <laughs> making creativity easier helps people create like it gets more people creating and uh, like with like and with the Amazon side of things ebooks like it's it's now so easy and there's no there can be no real upfront cost when it comes to making an ebook. Um, like there definitely are things that you want to get done, like editing and cover and stuff like that. But actually getting your book out there and for people to uh, read, it's so easy to do. And you find a lot of uh, people when it becomes easier, they're more likely to do something. Like you always hear. Like, I always hear people saying, like, oh, I couldn't write a novel. But, I mean, you have an idea for one, right? Like, I, there's so many people that really seem to have ideas in their head. They just kind of need to get it on paper and then making it easier for them to get it out there as well feels like they're more likely to do it. Mm, definitely. I think there's a, there's a lot of creative folks that have been, you know, pining to do something, but just seems a bit difficult. It seems uh, you, know, you have to go through all these steps, agent. And, and I think a lot of people, it's also a case of them maybe you know, having a bit of a, a self-esteem thing going on. They think, oh, well, who would ever want to read my stuff? Who would <laughs> ever want to, <laughs> you know, I'm not good enough. Why should I go through all that effort just to have 20 people tell me I'm not good enough? Yeah, like and, rejection. Just <laughs> even if we look at uh, relationships, right? You know, you get a you get few rejections. You kind of get discouraged. And uh, I even have like an example a little, uh, close to home. There, uh, my spouse, her mother, uh, tried to get a book 
published. Uh, I think it was a long time ago, and she got rejected there and uh, just hasn't tried since, it seems. So it really feels like maybe she was uh, discouraged by that and yeah. it kind of stopped her from pursuing that. And like, uh, from what I understand, she really likes to read and write as well. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it is. It's very unfortunate. I mean, you don't know, uh, you know, what kind of a waste that becomes now, because maybe she would have found, you know, a big readership. She could have changed many people's lives, mm -hmm. depending on what she wrote. I'm not sure, but, uh, Definitely, I mean, I mean to fall out back on the cliched examples that everybody uses, but you know, J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter, she got rejected what twelve times, mm -hmm. and imagine if after the eleventh time she just gave up, and well, the world just would have to do without Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think the more barriers to entry we remove, the more of these little hidden gems have a chance to. You know, come out and shine and just be available. And I think in general that's making, I mean, a whole culture richer. Yeah, and like I, I know I, I mentioned it like crazy, but the Martian as well. Uh, it was initially uh, rejected uh, several times, and then uh, Andy Weir uh, or Wire, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. There. <laughs> uh, he <laughs> ended up self-publishing. The novel and it did really well and uh, it was eventually picked up by a publishing house and now it's a movie with with Matt Damon in it like yeah well <laughs> it doesn't people. doesn't get any better than that really and uh, like it definitely um, those examples can sometimes be few and far between like not every independent novel or independent movie is going to be a hit. But if we take away those barriers, like you were saying, we're more likely to actually create something. Like um, uh, recently there was a, a game that came out uh, that kind of inspired this topic uh, called Super Mario Maker. And uh, I know that we talk about games a little too much here already. We're only on the... <laughs> On the, uh, what is this, the third, technically? Third, yeah. <laughs> and we've already <laughs> talked about games, I think, on all of them. But uh, <laughs> the Super Mario Maker, if anyone knows about the Super Mario games, uh, basically you get to create your own levels in this game. And so many people have started creating these, and they make really clever, clever levels and it feels like they never would have done that if there was not this option because they can't code or something like that. And uh, definitely I feel that way as well. Like I'm not very good at math or coding or anything like that. You might be a little bit better than me, of course, but uh, making it easier uh, would definitely inspire me to make a game or make a level in Mario and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah we've got a lot of uh, crowdsourcing going on nowadays i mean it's oh, it's in books sometimes it's in games nowadays it's a lot of things um like i remember spore was another game that had you know lots of user generated content mm -hmm. and kind of lightens the load on the devs but yeah <laughs> i i think yeah a lot of people who would never even think of themselves as game coders now actually went and created levels in mario and maybe some of them even got inspired by that too you know, some high school kid that decided, well, this was cool enough, and maybe I'll become a games developer for real. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you never know. And there's, of course, the other side of the coin as well. Um, making it so easy by removing all these barriers to entry, um, you'll get all the good stuff coming out of, you know, the out to market. And But many people are afraid that there's also a downside to this. You know, there's is giving everyone the opportunity to write and create and will of course also give the opportunity for them to produce things that are not so good you know not maybe at the top of the pile let's yeah. be nice and say it that way yeah. um, so this is this is also a concern i think well i mean people. yeah definitely like on that end of things uh kind of touched on it before there as well like 
it really is there is a responsibility uh that when you are putting something out there you have to make it as good as you can like and for my end of things like i have i'm sure that you have as well uh, written things before publishing the so the first uh novel there and when i was looking back on it it's like it's just not good enough right so i wasn't going to publish it until i actually wrote the blackbeard's freedom i didn't feel that uh what i was writing was good enough for other people to see but even after that i made sure to get an editor get somebody to look it over and like get friends to look it over and give me feedback and uh fix those mistakes and uh try and uh like take away those uh bad habits yeah. that i had formed uh with writing and and fix it before i actually released it and there i think there is really a responsibility that uh people should have that they necessarily might not when it comes to self-publishing uh which is unfortunate but it's look it's unfortunate and look it's good when people like you uh take all those precautions and you know be that careful and that thorough and diligent and i think in the end well look i'm a big believer in free market economics i think the market will sort itself out i don't think mm-hmm. it's you know your brand is something that you have to take care of and if you start publishing just anything you want and anything that you don't even have checked for quality or you know you don't do too much effort with even then i mean that's going to be on your name for pretty much the rest of your life that's going to affect your brand and yeah. you're free to do so <laughs> but i don't think in the long term I don't think that's really going to have much of an effect on the market itself. You know, people are quite good, I think, at finding the things that they like, recommending mm-hmm. word of mouth, maybe blog reviews, and I think the the things that deserve to be left by the wayside probably will be. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Like again, like kind of playing both sides here, but like. Yeah. Yeah, because there definitely are some of those hidden gems, as it were, that uh, won't get recognized. But uh, I definitely feel the same way. Like if uh, if your book isn't good enough, people are going to review it as such, mm-hmm. and it's not going to really go anywhere. Yeah, you're going to know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> reviews can be heartless sometimes, but yeah, there we are. So, uh, viewers, why don't you let us know in the comments there uh, what you think. Do you think that um, when things are easier to create, it's going to allow the good to rise to the top there? Or uh, do you think it's just going to kind of allow more people just to put out things just, you know, for money? Just put out whatever. Let us know in those comments. And uh, thank you for joining us here on Second Drafts Podcast. Uh, Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And uh, let us know what you'd like to see from us also in the future podcasts. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.